I want you to do me a favor and to close your mouth and say La ilaha illallah. Close your lips and let your tongue move with La ilaha illallah. What you'll notice is that it is the only form of dhikr, as Imam bin Hazm rahimullah and other scholars have said, that you can actually do without moving your lips at all because it only involves the tongue. And that's one of the reasons why the scholars mentioned that it's called karimatul ikhlas, the statement of sincerity. You could literally be walking around, be at work, be talking to someone or looking at someone and have your mouth closed. And we all need to keep our mouths closed a little bit more and say, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. You'll notice that the Prophet wasallam said, keep your mouth moist with La ilaha illallah. Keep your tongue wet with La ilaha illallah. Don't let a moment pass by without saying La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. And this is the most precious word that we have in this world. It's literally the purpose of our existence. And as you say it throughout your life in every single setting, even if quietly and no one else notices, you pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the ability to die with this word being your last word. Because if a person dies saying la ilaha illallah, then that person has been guaranteed Jannah. La ilaha illallah. The Prophet وسلم, said, Jaddidu imanakum. He said to the companions, Renew your faith. They said, Ya Rasulullah, how do we renew our faith? He said, Keep saying, La ilaha illallah. Now, what's the meaning of La ilaha illallah? La ilaha illallah, obviously, in simple terms, we say there is no God besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the actual meaning of La ilaha illallah is that there is no deity worthy of worship or unconditional obedience except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a statement that includes both negation and affirmation. So think of tasbih and tahmeed, negation and affirmation. La ilaha, there is no God except for Allah. La ilaha is negation. And you think of Surah Al-Kafirun as an elaboration of that negation. Illallah is affirmation. And you think of Qul Allahu Ahad, Surah Al-Ikhlas, as an elaboration of the affirmation of illallah. So la ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. There is no God, no deity worthy of worship or unconditional obedience except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, afdalu dhikr, the best form of remembrance is la ilaha illallah. Now you might remember this narration, the best dua is alhamdulillah. The best dhikr is la ilaha illallah. And al hafidh bin Rajab rahimahullah, he beautifully summarizes this by saying that every ni'mah, every blessing that you get, you pay for that blessing by saying Alhamdulillah. But as for Jannah, you pay for it by saying La ilaha illallah. So La ilaha illallah is the key to entering into Jannah. And Alhamdulillah is how you pay for the blessings that are given to you. And of course, we would never be able to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enough. La ilaha illallah. It's how you enter Islam. La ilaha illallah. It's how you enter into Jannah. La ilaha illallah is the phrase that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, goes straight to the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La ilaha illallah is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you need to gain his intercession on the day of judgment. La ilaha illallah is the card the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that on the day of judgment would be placed in your scale and would send all of your sins flying on the other side. And every construction of la ilaha illallah becomes even that much more powerful. So what do I mean by that? La ilaha illallah alone is the key to Jannah, right? But the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever does wudu properly, and then says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lah, wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. That that dhikr literally opens up all eight gates of Jannah. So you think about how you take la ilaha illallah, and then you build on la ilaha illallah, both in terms of the athkar that come as a result of it, as well as the great meanings that are embedded in those athkar. Now, what's the daily usage of la ilaha illallah? You'll find it for the most simple things, such as warding off laziness, عند الكسر. You'll also find it for renewing our intention for anything that we do. And of course, as we said, we say this throughout the day. Anything that reminds you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, say la ilaha illallah. When you see anything that reminds you of Allah's unlimited capacity and your limited capacity, then say la ilaha illallah. When you see that Allah has fulfilled a promise to you, you say la ilaha illallah. 
This is the promise of Allah come true. And you'll notice that it is used as part of the sequence of our lowest points and our highest points. So the Prophet وسلم, said, the best dua for hardship is La ilaha illa anta, subhanak, inni kuntu min al-dhalimeen. There is no God but you. How perfect are you? I was from the wrongdoers. And so this is when a person is in hardship and the Prophet وسلم, said, no one says this dua seeking Allah's alleviation of a hardship, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant that to them. Then he said sallallahu alayhi wa that the best dua that has been made is the dua that I and the prophets have said on the day of Arafah. La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika la, lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd, wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir. So this dua, la ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika la, he is one, he has no partners. Lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd, to him belongs all possession and all praise, and he has power over all things. He said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that this is the best dua on the day of Arafah. Now on a daily basis, he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that if a person says this dua 10 times in the morning and 10 times in the evening, it is like freeing four slaves from the children of Ismail Alayhi Salaam. So you think about that, 10 times between Fajr and sunrise, 10 times between Asr and Maghrib, and it's as if you have freed four people from slavery from the children of Ismail. And what's the reward of that? The Prophet ﷺ said that whoever frees a slave from captivity, Allah will free every part of them from the hellfire. So that's just for saying it 10 times. He said in another narration that whoever says it 100 times, it's as if they have freed 10 slaves and Allah will write down for them 100 special good deeds and Allah will erase 100 sins and Allah will grant that person a hirz, a shield from the shaitan. And no one has anything better unless they do even more than that, meaning they say it even more than a hundred times. You say this dhikr after the prayer, after you finish saying SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, and Allahu Akbar 33 times. You say La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la, lahu al-mulku wa lahu al-hamdu huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. You also say this prayer before you sleep, and you even say this prayer when you enter into the marketplace. This dua, is known as Dua al suq La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika la, lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd, yuhyi wa yumit, wa huwa hayyun la yamut, biyadihi al-khayr, wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. The only thing that has been added in this dua is yuhyi wa yumit, wa huwa hayyun la yamut, right? Allah gives life and death, and Allah is ever living, and He does not die. And one of the wisdoms of that is that when you walk into the marketplace and you see the materials of this life, you remind yourself, Allahumma la aisha illa aishul akhirah. Oh Allah, there is no life except for eternal life. The true life exists not in this dunya, but in the hereafter. And Rasulullah said that whoever says this dua upon entering into the marketplace, Allah will write down for them alf alf, a thousand by a thousand, which is one million hasanat and remove from them one million sayyat, and raise them by one million darajat, one million degrees. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will build them a home in paradise. How many palaces, how many degrees, how many deeds, how many that we have missed out on just by failing to say la ilaha illallah on a consistent basis and in every single situation. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma thabbitna inda al-mawti bi la ilaha illallah. Oh Allah, allow us to be able to utter la ilaha illallah at the time of our death. La ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا الله العظيم الحليم لا إله إلا الله رب السماوات والأرض ورب العرش العظيم لا إله إلا الله العظيم الحليم لا إله إلا الله رب العرش العظيم 
لا إله إلا الله رب السماوات ورب الأرض ورب العرش الكريم لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو حي لا يموت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير اللهم لا مانع لما أعطيت ولا معطي لما منعت ولا ينفع ذا الجد منك الجد لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير لا إله إلا الله مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون أهل النعمة والفضل والثناء الحسن لا إله إلا الله مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون لا إله إلا الله وحده أعز جنده ونصر عبده وغلب الأحزاب وحده فلا شيء بعده لا إله إلا الله الواحد القهار رب السماوات والأرض وما بينهما العزيز الغفار أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله وأن عيسى عبد الله وابن أمته وكلمته ألقاها إلى مريم وروح منه وأن الجنة حق وأن النار حق أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله رضيت بالله ربا وبمحمد رسولا وبالإسلام دينا